Amen, man. Amen, amen. Well, I, I tell you, last uh, we, my wife and I, we were, we were out of town last week up in Michigan, uh, up in Yankee country. Went and saw, saw my 92, 92, 92 year old grandmother, my mom's mom. And uh, boy, she's ornery as ever. And uh, boy, her, her and Miss Betty Jolly, boy, they had two, two peas in a pod right there, man. They're like Thelma and Louise. And uh, boy, I tell you, she's sharp as ever, man. Her, she gets around a little slow, but boy, her mind is sharp. And uh, never misses a day of church. 92 years old. And uh, she is the oldest living member of her church, charter member of her church, 92 years old, in uh, Union Street Missionary Baptist Church. And, and uh, she loves the Lord with all her heart. But we were up there seeing her and having a great time. You know, we had a family get together, and I had a co my cousin's wife. We were sitting around the patio table there, and she just about lunged across the table. And she says, what kind of church do you go to? <laughs> I said, what do you mean? She says, I watched online. Now, she's Catholic, all right? She says, what do y'all do there? She says, I've never seen anything like it in my life. She says, there's something there that's real. Am I right? And I'm telling you, she, words getting out. Words getting out what God's doing at Iron Worship Church. And uh, man, I tell you, she, she got online and watched and, and uh, watches services. And man, I tell you, it's just God, God's doing something in a little old field on the side of the highway in Rickman, Tennessee. Can I get an amen? Amen. So I'm, I'm glad we get to be a part of it. Amen. 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 And uh, I, I believe that uh, what God's doing here at our worship church is special. And uh, now if you, wanna, if you want a good, if you want a, a, a 50-minute church service with two songs and a sermonette by a preacher read and just mark it off your list, that's great. This ain't your church, all right? <laughs> but if you want to experience the power of God in a real way, I'm telling you, right up in here, there's some hungry folks that knows there's more to this thing with Jesus, amen? Amen. Anybody want more? Let me hear from you. Amen. Nothing against those other churches. Don't get me wrong, all right? But I'm telling you, you never know what's going to happen from Sunday to Sunday here at I'm Worship Church. You might see somebody get healed. You might see somebody get saved. You might see somebody's marriage get put back together. I'm telling you, you don't know what you're going to see. And here's the thing, church. You can't afford to miss a single service. Hello? Because then you'll be behind. And uh, last week when we were in Michigan, man, I was in the shower. And, man, I threw the curtain open, getting dried off. And I said, honey, get the TV turned on. Church, get ready to start. We got to watch on YouTube. And she says, boy, settle down. It's only 10 o'clock. And uh, but I was out, we were out of town, but I wanted to be in worship with my family. Because I love my church. Amen. And uh, boy, didn't pastor bring a word last week. Amen. Four saved last Sunday. I said four saved from hell last If it was your family, you'd be shouting. If it was your child, you'd be shouting. If it was your husband, you'd be praising God right now. Sit there and look at me. Four people saved last Sunday. Five rededicated. Woo! Hell lost another one. I, yeah, baby. And how many baptized? Four, two. Two last Sunday. One today. God's doing something at Iron Worship Church. Amen. Amen. I tell you, man. So you can't afford, I said all that to say this. You can't afford to miss a single service. All right? You need to be plugged in. You need to be here because God's God's taken us somewhere. Amen. Amen. We ain't just hearing another, another sermon Sunday after sermon. God's taking us somewhere. Amen. And I'm ready to go. I'm just glad to be along for the ride. Amen. 
Amen. Where Jesus goes, I will follow. Amen. All right, I got to hit the ground running. For some reason, first service, man, they say I went long. I was like, no, the worship team took too long. And that's what it was. So, yeah, so I ain't no. So we're going to hit the ground running, all right? Seriously, though. Uh, but I got a word today. Amen. Luke chapter 4 and uh, verse 14. And uh, Luke chapter 4, verse 14. And uh, I tell you what, let's stand up and read. Let's give honor to the Lord, his word and his presence. Amen. So Luke, Luke 4, 14, I'm sorry. Luke 4, 14 says, Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the spirit. How did he return to Galilee? By the power of the spirit. And news about him spread through the whole countryside. And he was teaching in their synagogues and everyone praised him. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to Jesus. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, and he quoted Isaiah, The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him, and he began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke well of Jesus and were amazed at his gracious words that came from his lips. And they said, isn't this Joseph's son, they asked. Amen. Lord, we thank you for the reading of your word, God. We thank you that your word is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, God, dividing asunder spirit, soul, and body. God, we thank you today, Lord. Lord, I ask you to let people look past my faults and my shortcomings, God. Let them see nothing but you today, Jesus. Lord, I ask you to let your word just take root in our heart and let it bring forth a harvest in our life. Don't let us leave the way that we walked in, Jesus, but let us leave transformed by your anointing and by your word. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. And everybody say, amen, amen, amen. amen. Well, when pastor asked me to preach today, I, uh, I don't take it lightly to be behind this sacred desk, amen? amen? Somebody asked me before church, you get nervous still? I said, I've been doing this since I was 17. I still get nervous. And if I didn't, something be wrong. Right, Pastor Rick? Because I'm on assignment. I'm on a mission from God. I'm like the Blues Brothers. I'm on a mission from God. I don't come by my own accord, amen? Amen. But, uh, man, I tell you, here at Iron Worship Church, it seems like God's been doing something just supernatural, peculiar, special in this place. It seems like over I Am Worship Church that we have an open heaven. Do you believe that today? We have an open heaven. It just seems like God, before we even pray and we form the words, that God already has the answer to our prayer. And I, I, I believe that now is the time to really press into his presence. Amen. And, and back, in, uh, back in January of 2020, you know, we all, we all had no idea what 2020 had in store for us. Uh, if I was giving it stars, it'd get one star. It's very bad. All right. 2020 was not very good. But at the beginning of 2020, Pastor gave a word. January 20, it was a vision message. And Pastor preached 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 9. And he said, a great and effective door has been opened to us. To I am worship. Y'all remember that? Y'all were here? He said, a great and effective door has been opened to us. And I don't think, church, that as a family, as a body, we really understood and realized the prophetic significance that our pastor had when he uttered those words in our ears. That a great and effective door has been opened to I Am Worship Church. Well, you're looking at some of them right now. Where's my Hope Center, guys? Hope is here. 
God's increasing our effectiveness and our influence and our reach. Amen. And, and, and I believe a great and effective door has been placed and opened before us. Amen. 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 But uh, in, in this scripture, in Luke chapter 4, we see Jesus went to the synagogue. He read the scripture, the, the prophet Isaiah. His ministry was just beginning. It was just getting traction, just getting off the ground. And here's Jesus' mission. If you want to know what Jesus' mission was, it was very clear. He had no confusion about why he was sent here. Uh, John chapter 6, verse 38 Jesus says, for I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. He said, I didn't come for myself. I came for God. I came for the Father. Amen. And there was no, there was no confusion what, G, what Jesus' mission was. Amen. And I believe today there's no confusion about what I am worship church's mission is. Amen. Let me ask you a question. Who wants to be more like Jesus? That should be everybody's hands. Amen. But let me ask you this. This gets a little bit more personal. Who wants to know Jesus more? See, that's where we separate the disciples from the bench warmers. Amen. You know, what a shame it would be if I was, my wife and I have been married 17 years this August, next month. Amen. That in itself is a miracle. I'll have to tell you about it sometime. Seriously. I mean, seriously, all right? But what a shame it would be if I was married to my wife for 50 years, but I didn't desire to know everything about her. You know, and I feel that's the way that Jesus looks down at us, Elder Keith. He's saying, you said yes to me. You gave your heart to me, but that's where it ended. Why haven't you asked me to know me more? The Bible says that he has secrets in hidden places. He has revelation. He has inspiration. He has things that he wants to reveal to you, but you're in a relationship with him and have no desire to know more about him. What a, what a travesty that would be. Amen? Jesus says, oh, thank you, Je <laughs> Jesus said, he that hungers and thirsts after righteousness, what? Shall be filled. It shall be. And when you put a demand on God, he shows up. I said, when you put a demand on God, he shows up. When you say, God, I want more of you and less of me. I want to know you more. Baby, before you get the rest of the words out of your mouth, he's already on his way. And he's ready to reveal himself to you in a powerful way. Amen? Amen. Jesus, so he starts his, his ministry. He's, he's come here not for his own will, but for the will of God who sent him. Let me tell you what Jesus was today, church. Let me tell you what it was, what he was. He was a sold-out servant. I said he was a sold-out servant. There was no question about what his mission was. There was no question about if he was going to do this or if he was going to do that. There was no internal struggle if he was going to say, well, I want to do this, but God wants me to do that. No, he was a sold-out servant. Say sold-out servant. He was a sold-out servant. I'm looking for some sold-out servants in here today. Do I have any sold-out servants in here today? Oh, there's a couple of you. I believe there's more than that. Are there any sold-out servants in here today? Sold-out servants. You ain't got to be recognized. You ain't got to be applauded. You ain't got to be promoted. Come on, somebody. You're just a sold-out servant. You're ready to do whatever is, is ready, whatever is needed. You're a sold-out servant for Jesus. Amen. And I believe, I believe there's some sold-out servants in the room today. You know, we were at, uh, uh, Jed and Heather got married yesterday. Look at them. Couldn't smack that smile off of the two-by-four, I tell you. And, and yesterday, I mean, it, it, you know, it was a wedding, beautiful day. And I was just standing around just admiring Pastor I said, look at all these I am worship servants just running around. 
I mean, they were running around like ants all over the place, doing this, doing that. And I said, our church is full of sold-out servants. They don't care what needs to be done. It's just going to get done. I don't care if I get to sing. I don't care if I get to preach. I don't care what I, if I got to change diapers, if I got to shake hands. I don't care what I got to do. I'm a sold-out servant, and I'm going to work in his house because I want to see somebody's life get changed. Hello, somebody. Whatever needs to be done, I'm going to do it because I'm a sold-out servant. Say, I'm a sold-out servant. I'm a sold-out servant. Amen. They ain't got to have the spotlight. They ain't got to always be right. They ain't got to be praised. They just want to see lives changed by Jesus. Amen. Here's something else that sold out servants are. They're in the word. They're, Paul said, though my outward man perishes, my inward man is renewed day by day. He knew the importance of building up his inner man. And sold out servants, they're in the word. They don't say things like, I'm burned out, Pastor Jason. Sold out servants don't get burned out. See, y'all, I'm losing some of you. When you're a soul, I, I wasn't made, Tyler, I wasn't made for the bench. I wouldn't, if, if I came in here every Sunday, Sunday after Sunday, and all I did was walk in this church and sit down and say, bless me, pastor. Like a little bird with my mouth open. Feed me. That, that wasn't why I was created, and I don't believe that's why you were created. Because I believe I'm in the room with some people that want more. I believe I'm in the room with some people that are sold out servants. And they, they and, and you know, and, and people say, well, I just got offended by so and so. Well, yeah, it's because you're not sold out. When's the last time you've been in the word? Sounds like flesh to me talking. When's the last time you've been in prayer? Because things like that don't come out of your spirit. Things like that come out from your flesh. Amen? And sold out servants know the importance of being in the word and being in prayer. Can I get a yes? Amen. Amen. Sold out servants don't blend in. They're not chameleons. You don't know if they're a Christian unless they show up at church. They're, they're not chameleons. They, they come over here with this crew and you know, the, the cussers, they're over here just swearing like a sailor. Man, I'm, I'm going to hang out with it. And then over here with the drinkers, I'm, I'm over here. I'm just a chameleon over here. No, sold out uh, servants, they know what they believe. Oh, I'm losing some of you. But sold out servants know what they believe. They don't blend in. And church, I believe, you can call me old-fashioned all day long. I'll take it as a badge of honor. But I believe the old school is the best school. I believe that wrong is still wrong and right is still right. And I believe 100% of this B-I-B-L-E. I don't believe that this is a buffet that I can pick or choose what I like and leave what I don't like. The Bible says eat it all. Sometimes you got to take your medicine even though it don't taste very good. Hello. And if this Bible says it, I believe it. If this Bible calls it wrong, I believe it. I still believe that homosexuality is a sin because this book says so. I still believe that abortion is murder because this Bible says thou shall not kill. I'm going to preach it whether you like it or not because this Bible says so. I believe that sex outside of marriage is a sin. Uh, Pastor, we're engaged. You've been engaged for four years, honey. He's just afraid of commitment. Sir, she's just keeping her options open. Dang, man. Jason, why you got to... That was free. 
But I believe what this Bible says, this is truth. And sold out servants know what they believe. They ain't gonna. They ain't gonna be willy miss, miss you washy and 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 not know what they believe. What this Bible says, they know because they're in it and they believe a hundred percent of it. Amen. Say, I'm a sold out servant. I'm a sold out servant. So, so. Oh, oh, I love this, Pastor. What can I still? What can I do and still be a Christian? You know what I call them? Fence sitters. Sitting on the fence. And you know who hangs out there? The enemy, the devil. He loves people sitting on the fence. Hello. You're on this side one minute. And I'm on this side the other minute. Fence sitters. What can I do and still be safe? What can I do and still go to heaven? I'm going to ask you a question. What can I do and still get closer to God? What can I do to get closer to God and still be on this earth and not get raptured? That's what I want to know. How close to God can I get and still keep my feet on this planet? What, what can I do? Come on now. When I was young, guys, I was on drugs. What? I was on drugs. Start very young. I was drugged to church on Sunday. I was drugged to church on Sunday night. Sunday morning, Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, three times. Tuesday night Bible study. Thursday night, I'm sorry, Tuesday night prayer meeting. Thursday night Bible study. And then any other revival that we had mixed in there around that, I was there. Brother Dwayne, I didn't have a choice. Am I talking to anybody, anybody like that today? Anybody on drugs as a kid? <laughs> and, and I remember one Sunday, I got, I got brave. My mom and dad were getting ready for church. I said, you know what? I'm going to stay home and play my Super Nintendo. <laughs> you remember that, Mom? So mom and dad were in there getting ready. My dad was a pastor. They were in there getting ready, and I was in there playing my Super Nintendo, Yoshi. And my dad comes in there. He says, what are you doing, boy? When I was in trouble, he called me boy. What are you doing, boy? I said, Dad, I think I'm going to stay home today. I don't, I don't really feel like going. I'm going to just stay home. He said, is that right? I said, yeah. He said, I'm going to give you till the count of ten to get that thing turned off and get your clothes on and get to the car or you ain't going to be able to sit down all day. I didn't have no choice. Church wasn't an option when I was a kid. But here's the thing, church. I thank God for that. Because, and that's, gosh, my, my Lord, I feel this. We've, the, the next generation has to see us experience the presence of God. We are raising up an entire generation of young people that have no idea what is, what the, pre they've never experienced the presence of God. I thank God for parents that drug me to church every time the doors were open. They laid a foundation in my life that helped me to be a better man, to help me to be a better husband, to help me to be a better father. They laid a foundation in my life. And all, this next generation has to see us walk the walk and talk the talk because we're sold out servants. Can I hear an amen? amen? I remember being raised in church and the old timers, they testimony service. They'd raise their hand. Pastor, I'm just glad to be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Anybody ever heard that when you were a kid? I'm just saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. And you know what was different about them? They had, they had some power behind their words. They had a walk with God that was real. They had some anointing on their life. Amen? And, and, and I remember those old saints, man, they could pray, they could grab hold of heaven, and they had something different about them because the closer they got to God, the more things that fell off their life. 
Sanctification. That's a word that we don't often hear in church anymore. You don't hear a sermon series, a three-week sermon series on sanctification. Uh Uh-uh. Now you hear a three-week sermon series on your best life, how to be a champion, but not how to live right. Amen? Sanctification. It's not a dirty word. It's becoming more like Christ. Amen? I remember when I first got saved, I went to the movies with some friends. We saw this movie. I forget what it was rated. I forget what movie it even was, but it was just dirty. It was just perverted, filthy, and lewd. And I remember we watched it. Didn't have any, any second thoughts about it. A few weeks later, I went to church camp, experienced the power of God, got filled with the Holy Spirit, and experienced the fire of God. Went back home, went with some other friends, to that same movie. Mike, five minutes into that movie, I got so uncomfortable. I felt so dirty. I said, I got to get out of here. I got to leave. And so we got up and left. What changed in just a few weeks? Because here's the thing. The more you become like Christ, the more you realize how much filth and how much sin you have in your life. Amen? Amen? That's the, that's the process of sanctification. Amen. We, we call it discipleship. Are any disciples in the room? Can I hear from you? Amen. Amen. You need to get plugged in with the discipleship. Holiness. Sanctification. Holiness was another thing when I was raised. Now here's the thing, church. Holiness is not the length of your sleeve. Holiness is not the length of your pant leg or your dress. Holiness is not the length of your hair or whether or not you wear makeup. That is not holiness. If that is your gauge of holiness, I'm sorry, but I'm going to kill your sacred cow today. That is not holiness. Holiness is an inward act. Amen? Here's my definition of holiness. Holiness is living out the standard of God every day in my life. Now, y'all raised your hand a minute ago. I want to become more like Jesus. Let me ask you this. In any of the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, is there anything that Jesus did, he participated in, he partook of, that ever made people question his integrity? Amen. He never, never, was he involved in fornication? No. Did he ever do anything? He, the Bible says that he was a sinless man. That's why he was the only one qualified to spill his blood and to be the propitiation for our sins. Amen? Amen. So if we want to become more like Jesus, we really, church, got to become more like Jesus. Amen? Amen. I got to move on. Hebrews 12, 14 says, make every effort to live in peace with everyone and to be holy. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Amen? The Bible's told that God told the children of Israel in the book of Exodus, he told them, he said, come out from among them and be separate. There should be a distinction between us and the world. Amen? John Olstein. Joel Olstein's late father. John Olstein, look him up on YouTube. I'm telling you, this guy could preach the paint off the wall. John Olstein, one of my favorite quotes by him. He said, the world has become so churchy and the church has become so worldly that you cannot tell the difference between the two anymore. Amen? That's the day we're living in. I believe we need to press in to God's holiness. You weren't called to fit in. If there's no distinction between you and a pre-Christian, that is not good. Amen? When you say yes to Jesus and you really want to be a sold-out servant, you're going to lose some friends. Guys, some of y'all need to take some spiritual scissors and go snip, snip, snip and cut some people out your life. Amen? Because when you get closer to Jesus, some things ought to be falling off your life. Amen. You weren't called to fit in. You weren't called to be friends with everybody. If you want everybody to like you, you need to go sell ice cream. All right? 
Not everybody's going to like you. When you serve Jesus, people are going to label you. Oh, he's one of those people that thinks he's better than everybody. I ain't better than nobody. I am the chiefest of sinners, just like what Paul said. If you want to look up dirty sinner, look up dirty sinner, you'll find my picture in the, in the dictionary. I am just a sinner saved by grace. Amen? I am better than nobody, but I ain't called to fit in either. Amen? I'm a sold out servant. Say, I'm a sold out servant. When I got saved, nobody had to tell me to quit drinking. Nobody had to tell me to quit smoking dope and jumping rope. I didn't inhale. All right. <laughs> Nobody had to tell me because when I became more like Christ, I wanted to really become more like Christ. And I understood that my body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. And I wasn't going to defile my temple with anything that would displease God. Amen. Amen. So when we become more like Jesus, we'll become sold out servants. But also, get this church, sold out servants, but we're also going to have his anointing. Oh boy. The anointing. The anointing. All right, so we're going to go to school real fast. The anointing. It's not anything mystical. It's not anything super spooky or spiritual. Here's the anointing. I'm going to give you my professional definition. The anointing is the supernatural empowerment given by God to you, watch this, for someone else's benefit. If it's all about you, it ain't the anointing. It's your talent. The anointing is what makes the difference. The anointing is what separates entertainment from an experience. The anointing. The anointing is what separates a motivational speech from a word from God. The anointing. It's not what I say. It's what's on what I say that makes the difference. It's the anointing that breaks chains. It's the supernatural empowerment. Now some of, some of you might be anointed. Say, I am anointed. See right there. Right there. There's another sacred cow that's getting ready to get killed right here at this altar. You are anointed. I don't care what your denomination says. I don't care. The Bible says that you are anointed. Did Jesus not say the works you saw me do, you're going to do? And greater. So if Jesus did those by the power of the anointing, that means to say that we are anointed. Say, I am anointed. I want you to say it like you believe it. Say, I am anointed. You are anointed. Some of you are anointed to give. Some of you are anointed to serve. Some of you are anointed to teach. Some of you are anointed to win souls. Amen. Some of you are anointed just to be a smiling face when people come in the door so that they can feel the love of Jesus. But you are anointed. Everybody under the sound of my voice, you are anointed for a specific reason in the body of Christ. You are anointed. You are. But Pastor Jason, you don't know my past. You don't know what. I didn't ask you for your resume. And God does not care because he does not call the qualified. He qualifies the called. And he does not ask you about your past experience. He does not take that into consideration. He says you're anointed. You're anointed. And people, there are people out here, pre-Christians, people that are hurting, that needs the anointing in your life. Do you believe that today? Amen. Say, I am anointed. Amen. When you say yes to Jesus, anybody say yes to Jesus? Yes. Woo, boy, it'll turn your life upside down and right side up and turn you around. Amen? But when you say yes to Jesus, you know this, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead takes up residence in your body. 
Not some watered down version. Not some twice removed by marriage. The same spirit that raised Jesus, our master from the dead, that invaded that borrowed tomb. The same spirit lives inside of you. The same spirit. Let's, I'll give you a Bible on it. All right? Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Verse 5. Those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit set their minds on the things of the Spirit. The mind of the flesh is death. What is the mind of the flesh? Death. But the mind of the Spirit is life and peace. If you need life and peace, you need to have a mind of the Spirit. Because the mind of the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it even do so. Those controlled by the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are controlled not by the flesh, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, we'll read it this way. So if the Spirit of God lives in you, you are controlled not by the flesh, but by the Spirit. So ask yourself, if what I'm about to do, am I being controlled by the flesh or by the Spirit. Amen? And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin. Yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. The same spirit that invaded that borrowed tomb is alive right now on the inside of you. Amen? Say, I'm anointed. So what I just described to you was the technical term called regeneration. So when you're saved, you become a new creation. Old things are passed away. All things are become Amen. But what I'm about to, now that's good, all right? But what I'm about to talk to you about is a totally separate experience. <laughs> Look at somebody and say, <laughs> put it up on the screen. It's the title of my sermon. <laughs> there you go. You ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Look at your neighbor say, you ain't seen nothing yet. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. John John chapter 14, verse 12. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing and they will do even greater works than these because I'm going to my Father. Jesus said the works that you saw me do, you're going to do. But even greater because I go to my Father. Now that would sound, that would sound strange to the casual observer because they would say, well, why, why am I going to do this because you go to your Father? Aren't you the miracle worker, Jesus? Amen? Why, why, why am I going to do greater because you go to your father? Well, let's, let's continue on. Let's look, let's look at uh, uh, John chapter 4, verse uh, 14, verse uh, 16. And I, Jesus said, I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate, another comforter, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. Amen? He said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. I'm burning up. So here, here, here's... Uh, where are we? Come here, come here, man. Yeah, yeah. Come here. 
So in the Old Testament, so what's up, buddy? So, <laughs> so in the <laughs> so when the uh, in the Old Testament, the Bible used to say, "And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson." The Spirit of the Lord came upon Samson. Samuel, the Spirit of the Lord came upon Samuel. So in the Old Testament, you see the Spirit of God would come upon men and women for a specific purpose for a temporary season. Y'all with me? So like the Spirit of God would cover that individual. And that Spirit of God, what's the anointing? Go back to the anointing. Supernatural empowerment given by God to you for someone else's. So in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God would cover that person. And they would do the thing that God called them to do. Amen? But then after a season, that Spirit would lift off of that person. Right? So what I'm saying here, thank you, buddy. So what I'm saying here is Jesus said, he that is with you is about to become in you. I'm trying. I'm trying to. St Jesus was a man. He was a son of man. He bled red blood just like me and you. He had emotions just like me and you. The Bible says that he went to the tomb of Lazarus. And the Bible says that he, he wept. He cried. He had emotions. Isn't that something? Jesus knew he was going to raise him from the dead. He knew he was a resurrection in the life. He hadn't forgot who he was. But he still wept. He still had emotions just like me and you. Because he was a son of man. But not only was he all human. He was also all God. I know it's hard to understand, but he was just as much a man as he was God and just as much God as he was a man. But here's the thing. Jesus was constrained by time and space. So, Lazarus, for example. They said, Lazarus, your friend's dead. You better hurry up and get over there and heal him or he's going to croak. And Jesus is like, I'm over here trying to heal this guy that's blind. I'm only one person. All the mothers in the house say yes. How many times do I hear my wife say to my children, I am only one person. So Jesus is over here healing the blind man. They're like, Lazarus, your friend is sick. You better hurry and get over there and heal him before he dies. Jesus over here ministering, healing the sick, raising the, raising the, the oppressed and, the, and the, the crippled and healing the lepers. His friend Lazarus dies. Because he was only one person in one place at one time. But Jesus said, the works you saw me do. You saw me heal people. You saw me raise the dead. You saw me heal the blind eyes. You saw me heal the lepers. You saw me do all these things. The works I do, you're going to do. But watch this. And even greater. Because he that is with you is about to get in you. Here, here's, what, here's what happened. Here's what happened. Okay. All right. So, John chapter 16, verse 7. But truly I tell you, it is for your good that I, Jesus, am going away. He said, it's for your good that I'm going back to Jesus, back to, or back to the Father. He said, unless I go back home to heaven, unless I go away, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, the per third person of the Trinity, the, the, the Paracletos, the one that's called alongside to help, he said, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go... I will send him to you. So what, what Jesus was saying was, he that's with you is about to be in you. So in other words, me doing all the work, y'all are about to do all the work. Because I go to my Father. Because he that's with you is about to get in you. Everywhere you go, you're going to see blind eyes open. Everywhere you go, uh, somebody's going to get it here in a minute. Everywhere you go, you're going to see demons cast out. Everywhere you go, you're going to see chains broken off. Because I go back to my Father. Because I was only one person. But he that's with you is about to get in you. And y'all are about to be everywhere. And Pastor Rick, 
I, I, I guess just, just, just the way my brain works. I believe when, when Jesus ascended to heaven and he went to be seated at the right hand of God the Father, I think on the way up, he was on his way up and he gave an old-fashioned WWF tag team handoff to the Holy Ghost and said, my ministry's done, but Holy Ghost, it's your turn. And on the day of Pentecost, they were all together in one accord, in one place. And suddenly, somebody say suddenly. Suddenly there is, appeared to them cloven tongues as of fire and a sound as of a rushing mighty wind. And they were all filled. Say all of them. Because at that moment, he that was with them became the God in them. Whoa. And all of a sudden they broke out from that upper room. And wherever they went, the anointing, miracles, signs, wonders. It wasn't just Jesus in one place. It was everybody in every place. Because the God that became the God with them became the God in them. Say, I am anointed. Come on, say it like you mean it. I am anointed. I am anointed. I don't care about your past. I didn't ask you for your resume. You're anointed. I don't care what somebody else said about you. I don't care if they said you're disqualified. I don't care if they said you're not good enough. I don't care if they said you're the wrong color. I don't care if they said you came from the wrong side of the tracks. I don't care. You are anointed. Yeah. Do me a favor. Say preach, white boy. Thank you. Man, I love it. I love you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Say, I'm anointed. The anointing. The anointing. When he's in us, he's everywhere. When he's in us, he's in the schools. When he's in us, he's in the truck with us. When he's in us, he's on our job. When he's in us, he's everywhere we go. Because the Holy Spirit takes up residence on the inside of you. And the works that you see Jesus do, you're about to do even greater because he went to his Father and because he sent the blessed Holy Spirit. Somebody say yes. yes. The anointing is what makes the difference. The anointing, if you're taking notes, write this down. The anointing is tangible. And it's transferable. It's not mystical. It's not spooky. It's not something weird. It's the supernatural empowerment given by God for someone else's benefit. Amen? Amen. So instead of coming upon you, remember like I just showed you, he's now within you. The anointing. I'm going to give you some examples. You want some examples? Okay, I'll give you some examples. The anointing. The anointing was in Elijah's mantle in 2 Kings chapter 2. The, the Bible says the prophet Elijah was taken to heaven in a fiery chariot. And his protege, Elisha, was promised a double portion. Elijah said, everything I did, you're going to do double. Doesn't that sound familiar? And Elisha said, okay. And so Elijah's taken to heaven, but here comes his mantle falling back to heaven. And Elisha picks up that mantle, that anointing. And the Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 2 that he struck the Jordan River and the Jordan River parted to the left and to the right because the anointing was in that mantle. The anointing was in Moses' rod when he stuck it out over the Red Sea and the water parted. It, the anointing is tangible. It's transferable. The anointing was in Samuel's oil. Amen? Anytime you see oil in the Bible, it's not talking about 10W30. All right? The anointing is represented by oil, specifically olive oil. You could preach a whole sermon just about that. The only way you get olive oil is by pressing. Some of your anointing is going to come in the struggles of your life. Woo. In Samuel's oil, he went to David's home to anoint a king. 
The Bible says he went to all of David's brothers, but the oil would not flow. He went down the line. The good looking one, the, per, the professional one, the successful one, all the ones that everybody thought would be king, the oil wouldn't flow. And finally he got down to little David, the little ruddy boy with freckles on his face. The lit wouldn't really amount to much. He was way in the backside of the desert, but the oil flowed on David. And the Bible says that the Spirit of the Lord came upon David that day. Amen? Because the anointing was in Samuel's oil. The anointing was in the hem of Jesus' garment in Mark chapter 5. You know the story? Woman with the issue of blood, tried everything for 12 years, been to every physician, paid money. She gave everything she could, but still grew worse. And the Bible says that she pressed through the crowd. She heard that Jesus was coming and she pressed through the crowd. And she reached out and she took hold of his garment. He reached, she reached out and grabbed hold of his robe. And the Bible says immediately... Power went out from him and into her body and immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up. And the Bible says that Jesus turned around and says, who touched me? And the disciples say, uh, Jesus, what do you mean who touched you? Everybody's touching you. Everybody's around you. He said, no, this touch was different because I felt virtue leave my body. The anointing left my body and went into that woman's body and healed her body. The anointing is tangible. It's transferable. Do you know that word, the hem of his garment, H-E-M? You know what that means? The finished part. In other words, Jesus finished something that we have to begin. <laughs> he finished something when he said, it is finished. Amen? Her healing was complete. It was in the, the hem of his garment. It, the anointing was in Jesus' words when he said, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus, come forth. The Bible says the man that had been dead four days <gasps> came back to life. Do you know, church, that if Jesus had not designated Lazarus by name, that at the sound of his command, every grave would have burst open. If he had said, Lazarus, come forth, every grave under the sound of his voice would have burst open at the anointing and power of Jesus' words. That's the anointing. Say, I'm anointed. The anointing was in Peter's shadow in Acts chapter 5. The Bible says that after the day of Pentecost, they were endued with power from on high. And, the, and the miracles, signs, wonders just became everyday occurrences. And the Bible says that Peter would walk to the synagogue. He would go to church. And the people knew his route. They knew his schedule. And they would lay these people out on the side of the path that were lame, that were sick, that were demon oppressed, that were leprous. They would lay them there on the side. And Peter's shadow would just pass over. For them and the Bible says that they would be instantly healed because of the anointing Amen. say it's the anointing are y'all with me today are y'all have I lost y'all are you with me today say it's the anointing that makes the difference the anointing was in Paul's handkerchiefs and aprons the Bible says that Paul would be ministering He'd be doing the works of the ministry and people would come up and they would cut off pieces of his garment off of his robe and they would take that piece and they would run back to people who were sick and who were oppressed and they would be healed. Not because of a cloth, not because of a man. It's because of the anointing that was upon that man. The anointing is transferable. Amen? It's the anointing that makes the difference. I'm anointed. Say, I'm anointed. Amen. The anointing flows. Watch this, church. I'm almost done. The anointing flows to people who are connected. Psalm, Psalm 133. Psalm 133. How good and how pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. 
What a profound statement. Unity. Amen? It is like, what is? Unity is like precious oil poured out on the head, running down on the beard and running down on Aaron's beard. When Moses anointed, remember the anointing oil represents the anointing, right? So when Moses takes that oil in Exodus chapter 10, and at God's command, he anoints Aaron and his sons to be priests over the nation of Israel. That's what it's referring to here. It's like the precious oil that's poured down on the head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down on the collar of his robe. Uh, let, let me, hey, uh, Nathaniel, come up here real quick. I'm going to give you an illustration. C come up here so everybody can see you. You're going to be a sheep. Give him a bath. Move. Bath. Eh. There you go. Get, I tell you what, get, the, get down on all fours there. You're a sheep. See, you can't just read the Bible. You got to read the Bible. What did David say in Psalm chapter 23? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. But go down a few verses and it says what? You anoint my head with oil. The anointing. And so these shepherds, even still to this day, they would take their flock, they would take their sheep, and they would, what they would do is they would put a board under them and raise them up on their hind legs. And they would take that anointing, oil, olive oil, and they would, they would anoint that sheep. They, they would take that oil and they would pour that oil on that sheep's head. I'm telling you, you could do a three-week sermon series just on the anointing oil. That anointing oil, that olive oil, go read it sometimes. It has healing properties. And so that oil would flow down the wool of that sheep. And whenever that sheep would would bruise its nose or cut its nose on some rocks. That anointing oil was there and would flow into that wound and help heal that wound because that's what the anointing does. Amen. And that anointing oil would flow down and it would cover the ears and it would keep pests away from driving that sheep mad. That's what the anointing does. It's going to repel your enemies. My God, I'm about to preach myself happy. The anointing would flow down. And then the, the anointing would flow down to that sheep's wool and get into its wool and make almost a slick sheen on the side of it. So whenever that sheep was off in the back hills, away from the shepherd, and that sheep found itself in a tight place between some rocks, that sheep would just slide right on through what was holding them back because the anointing, oh, I'm here to tell you today, church, the anointing is about to propel you to places you never thought you could go. And what the devil was trying to hold you on, he's just going to, where'd they go? It's the anointing. They're slippery. Amen? It's the anointing. But here, here, watch this. Psalm 133. How good, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious ointment. Watch this. Say, get in alignment. Hey, pastor, come up here if you would, brother. When that anointing flows, say, I'm a sheep. When that anointing flows from our pastor, from the head, down to the body that anointing flows from the head down to the body that anointing flows that say everybody stretch your hands say anointing god anointing god because the more he gets anointed the more that we get anointed 
because the anointing flows from the head down. I just read it to you in Psalm 133. God anoint our pastor, anoint the head because as it flows from the head, it's going to flow to the body. And as it flows from the head, it's going to flow to the children's ministry. It's going to flow to the ushers. It's going to flow to the worship team. It's going to flow. It's going to flow to Hope Center. It's going to flow. The anointing is going to flow. Somebody say, I am anointed. You ain't seen nothing yet, baby. I said you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. You saw somebody come in here and get healed just the other week. You saw before we even prayed, God healed a body up in Connecticut. You ain't seen nothing yet, baby. If they come in here and get touched, imagine what's going to happen when we go out there and touch them. Say, I am anointed. Thank you, sheep. Say, I'm anointed. Watch the screen. They got, they, they got something they're going to show you. They got something they're going to show you. Say, Hi, I'm anointed. Back Look at that miracle. Church. I wanted to take a moment to thank all of you for the love and prayers that you were giving my grandson, Tucker, who's right here. He's out of the hospital. He's doing great. We're enjoying this nice hot day in a swimming pool. And loving every minute of it. Thank you. He says thank you. We love you guys. And you take care. Bye. He was on a ventilator less than a month ago. And here's the thing, church. We were in worship. We were worshiping. And all of a sudden, God just dropped down in this place. And I said, hey, get the elders of the church. James chapter 3. If any sick among you, call for the elders of the church so that they can anoint with oil. And pray the prayer of faith because the prayer of faith will raise the sick. And we prayed for Tucker, his grandfather. Where are you at, Tony? Get down here. To Tony came down here. And, 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 and we prayed for, for Tony. And we just prayed, God, let your will be done. God, he's up in Connecticut. He's on a ventilator. He's been in an accident. God, you're in control. And we prayed, right? We prayed. And God moved. And then we started worshiping. And then all of a sudden, one of our production team comes out and says, we got a message. They just took Tucker off the ventilator just then. Why are you not throwing chairs in here? Why are you not losing your mind? It's the anointing. The anointing. We, we did according to James chapter 3. We prayed. The elders of the church, we anointed with oil. We prayed. That same anointing that's in Rickman, Tennessee. And that anointing invaded that, that uh, pediatric ICU room and invaded that child's body and raised him up because the anointing is real. The anointing is tangible. The anointing is transferable. <sighs> Say, it was a big day. Say, Miracles don't mean much unless they're your miracles. And they're, they're not acting as crazy as you would, right? What you got to say? You know, up until that, that time there, uh, if I had ever had any doubts, it was before that. And that day when that happened right here uh, really changed things for my life. It did. It proved to me that miracles can happen and that they do happen and I got to witness it for the first time in my life. So. Say I'm anointed. I'm anointed. I'm anointed. I'm getting ready to bust out of here. We're coming to a city near you, baby. I am anointed. I'm about to walk through schools and see children get saved. I'm about to walk through Walmart and say, I'm sorry. I know I'm in Walmart, but the Holy Spirit just told me to pray for you. What do you need Jesus to do for you today? Because I'm anointed. Say, I'm anointed. My Lord, where's the team? We get up, get up here. I tell you, if y'all don't cut me off, I won't stop. But say, you ain't seen nothing yet. What? Listen, church, listen. 
You see what happens Sunday after Sunday when people come in this place and experience the presence of God. It's almost become a normal occurrence. We've almost become numb to it. We've almost become accustomed to it. Because we see people coming so freely to the altar. We, we see lives getting transformed so frequently coming in this place and experiencing the anointing of God. Well, what do you think is going to happen when we take what's in here out there? Because we're anointed. You don't have to say, well, I need the pastor to pray for me. I don't need him to pray for me. I'm anointed. I know you get, yeah. <laughs> Pastor, come pray for me. You're anointed. Lay hands on yourself and pray the prayer of faith and watch what God does. Amen. I'm anointed. I know, I know some of this is hard for y'all. I know some of y'all, some of y'all weren't taught this. I understand. I'm just giving you Bible. Y'all believe me? I'm just giving you a Bible. I know some of y'all weren't taught the righteousness of God, that you are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. I understand that. All I did was give you Bible today. And I want to tell you, you're anointed. Jesus said, the works that I do, you're going to do. And greater. Because the same spirit that is with you is in you. You're anointed. Everybody stand. Can I? Can I get some Holy Ghost filled prayer warriors? Let me get the elders, pastors. I'm gonna obey the Holy Spirit real fast. Hey, Jed, come down here. You and Miss Heather, Pastor Rick and Miss Donna. I want you just to stand across the front here. Just stand across the front here. Pastor Todd, Miss Monica, Chris. I feel the anointing in this place today. I said I feel the anointing in this place today. And you don't have to leave the way that you walked in here. But the anointing of God can transform you and change you in an instant. And what takes the doctors months to do, the anointing can do in a matter of seconds. Do you believe that today? And I, I'm going to obey the Holy Ghost, but if you need a touch in your body, if you need God to do something in your life, if you need a miracle in your life, if you just want to, if you want to just experience more of God, I want you to come down here. One of these Holy Ghost filled prayer warriors is going to pray with you. And they're going to believe God. And we're going to do according to James chapter 3. We're going to anoint with oil. And we're going to pray the prayer of faith. And we're going to see God perform miracles according to His Word. Can I get an amen? So if you need God to move, get down here. Get down here. The anointing is in this room. The anointing is in this room. They're going to pray for you. Come on down. Come on down. If you're not down here praying, you're praying in your seat. Pray for them like it's your relative. Pray for them like it's your miracle. Thank you, Jesus. Anointing Jesus. We need your anointing, Jesus. Break every chain. Break every chain, Jesus. Over us, come rest on us, come rest on us as the spirit was moving over the water. Spirit, come move over us, come rest on us. Come down, spirit, when you hear me, make my 
online I want you to put your faith in action the anointing can touch you right where you're at you just stretch your hands towards that screen that you're watching right now and I want you to put your faith out there for whatever you're believing God for whatever you need him to do whatever you need Jesus to do he can do it today extend your faith we're gonna believe God with you today believe God for the impossible the anointing is coming right where you're at come on church worship the Lord as the spirit was moved as the spirit was moving over the waters and come through over us come rest on us come rest on us as the spirit was moving over the waters Yusuf. Come up here. Nat. Stay right there. I got a word for God from you. Lift your hands. Watch you. Ever since I saw you yesterday at the Hope Center, I've had you on my mind. And I prayed about you last night. And I want to tell you, God spoke to me to say, the supernatural promotion is on the way for you. That He is about to open doors. He's about to open doors for you that no man can shut. And He's about to shut doors that no man can open. But His supernatural favor is coming upon you now, just like that anointing. His supernatural anointing, you were not called to sit on the sidelines, but you are a leader. You are a man of God, and God has called you for a great purpose, says God. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Keep your eyes upon me, says God, and I will open doors, and I will make the crooked way straight, and I will give promotion in the due season, says God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody give God praise. I've heard your prayers, says God. I've seen your tears in the secret place. And although it seems impossible, I specialize, God says, in the impossible. So don't look to the left and don't look to the right, but trust in me, daughter, for I will perform it. I will do it. Trust in me. And that which seems impossible shall be performed in the due season in the appropriate time 
Don't try to do it in your own flesh. Don't try to do it in your own power. But trust in me, says God, and I will perform it. Somebody give God praise in the name of Jesus. Lay your hands on her belly. Lay your hands on her belly. In the name of Jesus, fill her fresh. Increase of faith. Increase anointing. She is worthy. She is worthy. She is anointed. Thank you, Jesus. Fill her fresh, Lord. Fill her fresh, Lord. Holy Spirit, fill us, Lord. Said, Holy Spirit, come rest on. You're all we want. 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 We're sold out servants. Come on, we're going to worship the Lord. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come rest. You're all we want. You're all we want. You're all we want. Come down, Spirit, when you do. to tell you that you've been trying to do things and you've been trying to open doors and you've been trying to make things happen and God is about ready to open doors for you he's about to pour favor on you and he's about to put some people in your life that's going to accomplish his will because one moment of favor is better than a lifetime of labor and God's about to pour supernatural favor out on you. I don't know what this means. You do. But he's about to pour supernatural favor. Money is not going to be an issue. He's going to perform it. And only he can get the glory because of what he's about to do. Somebody give God praise for my brother back there. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, come 
God now. Come rest on us. Come rest there's a, on us. There's a woman here. You need healing in your body. So I, I don't know, something in your abdomen. I don't know if it's your stomach, reproductive part. I don't know what it is. All I, all I know is God told me there's a woman here who needs healing in her abdomen. And the anointing is here right now to touch your body. I don't know where you're at. God wouldn't have told me unless there was somebody here. Someplace in your abdomen. You need God to touch your body. Where are you at? Get down here. Is that you? Is that you? Come right over here. there is nothing that is too hard for you that God you are the great physician and God we thank you right now that you are able to perform your word that there is nothing that is too hard for you and Lord I thank you right now for your anointing that you're going to make right what is wrong that you're going to put back what has been taken I rebuke pain right now in the name of Jesus I rebuke discomfort right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you for complete restoration. I thank you for complete healing right now in the name of Jesus. The anointing flooding your body right now in the name of Jesus. It is done. It is done. It is done. It is there. It is there. It is there. It is. It is done. It is done. Oh, I feel like I feel like fire. I feel. I feel it right now. The anointing. It is done right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It's done. Somebody give God praise for these women right now. spoke I'm telling you as if he, his ear, his mouth was in my ear I heard him so clearly my mother's family is missionary Baptist wonderful family my father's background is church of God just a little different and God spoke to me he told me I got filled with the Holy Spirit and God spoke to me during this time of prayer and he said I'm fixing to take your mother's background of soul winning because Baptists are best soul winners that there are he said I'm taking your mother's anointing that's on her family's life for winning souls and he's taking he said, I'm taking the anointing that's been passed down on your father's side for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And he said, I'm merging them 
inside of you. My God, I feel it. And there is no coincidence that you have been called for outreach, brother, for evangelism. And that same word is just as valid for you as it was for me. He said, I'm taking the soul winning anointing and I'm taking the spiritual empowerment anointing and I'm merging them and I'm baptizing you right now. Somebody lay your hands on him right now. Somebody lay your hands on him right now. I'm pouring out that same anointing right now. Says God that souls are going to be one that bodies are going to be healed the demon oppressed are going to be set free by the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost and brother that anointing is going to flow through you it's going to flow through you like mighty waters in the name of thank you Jesus Thank you, God. One more time, lift your hands. 